Grab your Bible and get ready for a great study. This is Talkin' Scripture. Hey everybody, welcome to Talkin' Scripture. My name is Gary and I'm so thankful that you're joining me here tonight as I'm coming to you live from the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains here in East Tennessee. And you have arrived at Talkin' Scripture and tonight we're going to we're going to talk a little bit on the subject of drawing near to God. Has God ever, let me ask you this, has God ever felt like he was a million miles away? Yeah, I think we've all kind of been there at times like that. But the fact is, is that it wasn't God that moved away from us, it's that we moved away from God. And I know that's a tough pill to swallow, especially right at the beginning of the broadcast tonight. But that just is a fact of of the matter. That just is is a fact there. Because God, you remember the, the poem Footprints in the Sand? Remember there was a stretch there where there was just one set of footprints there? That's when God was carrying us when we were going through times of trouble. But you see, a lot of times when we're not going through times of trouble, when we're we're on top of the mountain, so to speak, Then we start getting complacent, we start looking at the things of the world, and we start getting away from the Lord. At least that's been my experience at times. I'm not going to say that I've always drifted away from God when things were going good, but there's times that I've done, and if you're honest with yourself, I'm sure that there's times that you have as well. And we're going to talk today on the subject of of steps to draw near to God. We're going to see how we can get back on track, how we can get back right at the, the... side of the Lord. And uh, so you want to, if you got your Bibles with you, or you got one of those Bibles on your phone or your tablet, I encourage you to go to the book of James and chapter number four. Book of James, chapter number four. And as you're turning there, I want to read the story out of Swindoll's ultimate book of illustrations and quotes. It's about perspectives. And Dr. Erwin Lutzer had initially made this this illustration that I'm going to use here. And it came out of his book, Failure, the Back Door to Success. He said a, a letter, a, a daughter wrote the following letter to her parents. She said, Dear Mom and Dad, just thought I'd drop you a note to clue you in on my plans. I've fallen in love with a guy named Jim. He quit high school after the 11th grade to get married. About a year ago, he got a divorce. We've been going steady for two months now, and we plan to get married in the fall. Until then, I've decided to move into his apartment. I think I might be pregnant. At any rate, I dropped out of school last week, although I'd like to finish college sometime in the future. On the next page, the letter continued. Mom and Dad, I just want to let you know that everything I've written so far in this letter is false. None of it is true. But, Mom and Dad, it is true that I got a C- in French and flunked my math. It is true that I'm going to need a lot more money for my tuition payments. The girl had made her point, even bad news can sound good if it is seen from a different perspective. What's your perspective today? Think about that. I'll be back here in just a couple minutes. Don't go anywhere. James chapter 4 will be right back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Talking Scripture. We're lost. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're not. It's just around the corner. We have the choice to either run our own lives or give that control to God. Why don't we ask for directions? I can do this on my own. God knows the future, and He loves us. Until we give Him control of our lives, we're lost. Admit it, dear. We're lost. No, no, no. It's just around the corner. I can feel it. Another message from Lifeline Productions, the comic strip of radio at lifelinepro.com. Kickstart your day with Scripture Link's daily dose of inspiration, live weekday mornings. Hey, neighbor, how do you do it? Do what? Your garden, it's so lush and beautiful. Oh, just a little time and energy. Hey, I work as hard as you do, yet your garden is flourishing and all I get is weeds. What makes yours different? I don't know. What kind of seeds are you using? Seeds? Is there something missing in your life? Are you just going through the motions? Jesus can give your life lasting meaning and purpose if you give him the chance. Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at lifelinepro.com. Let's get back for our Bible study. 
You are listening to Talking Scripture. All right, welcome back. And I encourage you, if you don't already, that you uh, go to your favorite podcast uh, site, whatever thing you use on your phone or tablet, um, to collect your podcast, whether it's Stitcher or or the Google Play Store, the iTunes, Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts, um, with some of the other ones that's out there, iHeartRadio, um, Spotify, CastBox. You can find our daily dose of inspiration on any one of those those things. You can get it right on your phone each and every day or on your tablet each and every morning. It's an awesome way, a great way to get started, get your day started off on the right foot. It's short, five minutes, six minutes maybe, if I get a little long-winded. Uh, broadcast that kind of, we, we talk a little bit about something we read in the Bible, and it just gets your day started off right. So it's free, just go to one of those sites or visit our website, www.myscripturelinks.org, and uh, just l- take a listen to that, you won't regret that. James chapter number 4 is where we're going to be at tonight, I want to welcome those that are in the chat room, and, and if you're listening to me now, I invite you to go ahead and jump into the chat room, you can ask your questions as we go through the study. And uh, I also want to encourage you to make sure at the end of the broadcast that you share this broadcast on your uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever of those social media sites that you use. So that way more people get to hear about the gospel. And uh, we're going to study tonight in James chapter number 4. We're going to read verses 6 through 10 tonight. And uh, we're going to see some steps that we need to take to draw near to God. Let's pray, and then we're going to jump into our study for tonight. Father, I just thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to come and to gather around your word, Father. Thank you for this platform that we use, Lord, to go and to, to share your gospel message throughout the world today, Father. And, Lord, I thank you that we can, we can come together. I thank you for each person that's here. I thank you for each person that will be listening to this, Lord. And I ask now that you open our hearts and our minds, Lord, so that we can hear from you, God, so that we can get the message that you have for us, your people, today. Father, bless this time that we have together, Lord, and help us to to blot out any distractions, Lord, so that we could just focus in on you today. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. James chapter 4, starting in verse number 6, going down through verse 10. We read this, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. I'm going to stop right there, and uh, there's several things that we're going to see here tonight as we talk on the subject of drawing near to God. The first thing we need to understand is that we got to be humble. In our day and age today, in our world today, humbleness, most people look at humbleness as a sign of weakness, as a sign of, of somebody that's not strong, but the exact opposite is what's true in that. To be humble is a source of great power because if we be humble, if we realize that our strength, our our life comes from the very throne of God, that helps us to be humble. We need to realize where that comes from. To be humble means to be modest without an excess of pride. It means to be modest without excess of pride. Humble is not a sign of weakness. Humbleness is a sign of great power. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 5, Jesus himself says, Blessed are the meek, or the humble, for they shall inherit the earth. It's not the strong that's going to inherit the earth. It's not the powerful people that's going to inherit the earth. No, it's the humble. It's the meek. It's the people who is doesn't have that excess of pride saying, man, how great am I? Look at everything I've accomplished for myself. Look at everything that I've done. Friends, that's not humbleness. That's pride. I was sitting in my car the other day when I came home from work, and I was looking at the house, and I've been doing a lot of of work on the house, a lot of remodeling on the house. And we had our decks uh, refinished and painted and stained. And uh, I was looking at the the outcome. 
And I thought, man, that really looks pretty. And it makes the house really shine. It makes the house really look good. And if you're not careful when you're going through a time like that, with thoughts like that, pride's going to set in there. It's going to be, look what I did to the house. Look what I did to make it better. No, God enabled me to get that stuff done. Pride is evil. We got to make sure that pride is not part of our life. We need to make sure that pride doesn't have a spot in our hearts and in our minds. Because if pride is in your life, humbleness is not. If pride is in your life, meekness is not. And that verse I read for you out of Matthew chapter 5 doesn't say the prideful are the ones that are blessed. Doesn't say that the prideful are the ones that's going to inherit the earth. No, it's the meek. It's the humble people. It's the people that, that look to God and try to praise God and live for him. In Psalm 37, verse 11, we read, But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. See what David's saying there? We will delight ourselves in the abundance of peace. Why is peace going to come after the meek inherit the earth? It's because pride isn't going to be here anymore. It's because the sin of pride will be gone. We're not going to be struggling with those things. We're not going to be fighting with those things. We will be there with God. We will be on this earth with God. What a day that's going to be. So the first step, we need to understand if we want to draw nigh to God, if we want to draw near to God, is to make sure that we're humble. Are you humble today? If God is bringing to your attention any bits of pride that's in your life, confess those things, repent of them, and get it made right. Get it took care of. Ask God today, God, is there something that I'm prideful about today? Is there something that is evil in my life today that's drawing me away from you? The next step, starting in verse number number 7, we read, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. That's the first thing. You see, the prideful person is not going to submit themselves to God. The, pri- the, the, the prideful person is not going to submit to God because he doesn't see a need to. The prideful person thinks that they can support themselves, that they can take care of everything, control everything, that they don't need nobody's help. But the one that's humble realizes we can't do anything like that. I've used this illustration before and I might as well use it again. That you can count on one hand the amount of book reports I did when I went to school because I have a tremendous fear of talking in front of people. But yet God called me to be a preacher of his gospel and a minister of his gospel. And every Sunday, I go to a local nursing home and I preach to the residents there. I share the gospel with them. I visit with them. I pray with them. I'm not telling you that for me to look prideful at what God is doing. But I'm telling you that because we need to humble ourselves and submit to God and allow God to control our lives, allow God to direct our paths, allow God to direct our steps. On our daily dose of inspiration broadcast in the morning, we're studying, actually it's in James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. We've been studying that this week and we're seeing planning the biblical way or planning the Bible way. And we're seeing that that we can't control anything. In fact, in verse, uh, let's jump down to verse 14 of James chapter 4. He says, Whereas ye not know what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. What James is telling us here is that we are just a mist in the in this world. We are just a blip on the radar. We're here today. We might be gone tomorrow. I don't know. But James is saying that we can't control our own destiny. We can't control our own lives. We got to follow God. We got to let him direct our paths. So the first step, the first step is to submit to God. Turn with with me, if you will, to the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 22. And it's going to be verse number 42. Luke chapter 22 and verse number 42. 
This here is right before the arrest of Jesus, right before his crucifixion. And he was in the garden. He took the disciples with him. And they were in the garden. And Jesus told them to watch and to pray. And Jesus went a little farther into the garden. And in verse 42, we read this. This is part of Jesus' prayer that night. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Let me say this at the outset, my friends, that Jesus was in no way trying to get out of doing what he was put here on earth to do. He was in no way trying to get out of going through the crucifixion, of being separated from God. That's not at all what he was trying to do. He was just saying to the Father, God, if there be any other way, let it be done. But not my will, but your will be done. Jesus was submitting himself to God, no matter what God was calling him to do. See, a lot of times I found myself, I found myself as I was praying and God was giving me directions and God was telling me what it is I need to be doing. Sometimes I'll say, well, God, I'll do that, but, you know, we got to maybe take this part of it away or that part of it away. Friends, if we're going to submit to God, we need to submit to him 100%. We can't put a contingency on it. We can't put a but in the statement. We can't We can't say, well, I'm going to do half of what you want me to do. We got to be all surrendered or we got to be none surrendered. Where are you at today? If we're going to submit ourselves to, if we're going to draw near to God, we need to submit ourselves to God and His will for our lives. That's what Jesus was doing in that prayer, in that prayer in the garden. He says, "Nevertheless, not my will, but Thine be done. God, not my will be done, but Your will." And as I go through each day, I try to pray when I get up and say, God, let your will be done today, not my will. My will would be just to stay in bed and turn off the alarm and, and sleep until noon. But God's will is what we need to do. We need to, we need to submit ourselves to God's will. And if we're living in pride, if we're living in sin, we're not going to do that. We need to first humble ourselves before God then we need to submit to him. Let's go back to James chapter 4. The third step in, in submitting to God, as we read here, is in verse 7. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil. That's the next step. We cannot, let's make this clear, we cannot resist the devil unless we first submit to God. Did you hear me tonight? We cannot resist the devil unless we first submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We read in 1 Peter chapter 5. That's just the next book over if you got your Bible. So you can turn there with me. 1 Peter chapter number 5. Starting in verse number 8. We read, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Friends, Peter's given us some good advice here. He's saying that we need to be sober. We need to be vigilant. To be sober doesn't mean that we're to be sober means that we're not drunk with, with alcohol, but we're also not drunk with the things of this world. Because if we're drunk with the things of this world, then the cares of this world is going to be, is going to make our vision impaired. It's going to impair our vision for, for the things of God. And we need to be watching. We need to be making sure that we're not falling into the, the snares and the traps and the stumbling blocks that Satan's going to be putting in your life. Because let me say this, friends. If you're going to make a conscious decision that you're going to live for the Lord, that you're going to live for God, the devil's going to do everything he can to try and draw you back. He's going to try and, and trip you up. He's going to try and, and make you stumble and fall and get you away from your relationship with God. But if you've submitted to God, you can resist the devil. Peter likens the devil to a roaring lion that is walking about seeking who he could devour. 
Do you ever watch those nature videos? For some reason, those nature videos show up in my my um, Facebook feed. And you'll see this lion or this lioness kind of hiding in the tall grass. And you can see the zebras or the antelopes there. And, and it's like they're stalking and they're seeing which one it is that they're going to jump out and, and attack. And they usually look for the weak one or the one that isn't where he should be with the rest of the pack. And then the lion pounces on that. That's what the devil's doing. He's hiding in the tall grass. He's waiting for us to not be paying attention. He's waiting for us to take a step or two away from God so that he can pounce in there and he can, he can cause us to stumble and fall and devour us and devour our faith. Don't fall victim. Resist the devil. And then it says, and he will flee from you friends send the devil packet today and make him flee by resisting him because you've submitted your life to god fourth step is found in verse number eight draw nigh to god and he will draw nigh to you friends that's drawing close to god that's drawing close to him Submit to God. If you're going to submit to God, then you better run and you better get into into the 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 shelter of God. How many times in the book of Psalms, when you're reading and studying in the book of Psalms, do you see David or one of the other psalmists say things like, the Lord is my fortress. He's my strong tower. I was up in Kentucky several years ago. Uh, me and my dad went up there, and we went to a place called Fort Boonesboro State Park. And a pretty cool place. It's a recreation of the original Fort Boonesboro. Um, you know, you could do some studying about that. I don't want to take up the time to talk about that. But there was a couple of, of trails that you could take. And as we were walking back toward the fort, on the one trail, I looked up at the top of the hill, and I could see the outline of the fort. And I started thinking, man, is it people that would have been running from Indians or running from from um, robbers or or whoever was trying to do them harm? They would see the fort and know that safety was just there, just just right around the bend. Friends, that's what we need to do. We need to look in the Bible. We need to study God's word. And we need to get ourselves as close to God as we can. And if you go out and you reach out to God, he's going to reach out to you. You got that picture kind of like that Michelangelo's picture, I think, where the hand of God is coming down and the hand of David is coming up and you can see where the fingers meet. That's the image we get. We got to draw close to God. And then he says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. That's the next two steps. We need to cleanse our hands. We need to wash our hands. You know, when you're working, you don't sit there and eat lunch before you wash your hands. Why? Because you're trying to get the dirt off your hands so that you don't eat any of the, the dirt and the, the things that contaminate it. And that's what we need to do when we draw close to God. We need to wash off the filth of sin. We need to wash off the filth of, of this world. And in Isaiah chapter number 1, verses 16 and 17, we read this, Wash you and make you clean. Put away your, the, evil, the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge, judge the fatherless and plead for the widow. Look at what Isaiah, the Lord's ta telling the nation of Israel through the prophet Isaiah. He's saying to wash you, make you clean, put away your evil doings, cease to do evil. We live in a world today that seems like we're running to do evil, like we're running to jump at the chance to do evil. But we need to cease those things. Then we need to purify our hearts. We need to purify our hearts. And if you want to go with me to the Gospel of Mark... Chapter number 7. Mark, chapter number 7. We're going to look here at verses 20 through 23. Mark, chapter 7. Starting in verse 20. And he said, and these are the words of Jesus now. That which cometh out of a man, that defileth a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, 
thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lavishness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. So, friends, it's because of all these things that's in our heart. We need to cleanse that heart. We need to allow the Lord to come in and sweep it up and clean it out and make it pure again. And finally, the last part of, of verse number 9, or actually verse number 9, gives us the last step we have. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Friends, we need to make sure we understand the seriousness of our sins. Our sin is a serious matter. That's why Jesus came, to pay the penalty for that sin. That's how serious of a matter it is. Sin isn't something that's, that's you know, nonchalant about it. A lot of times we treat sin as, as nothing more than, hey, I'm going to do what I want today. And then at night, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to pray and I'm going to say, Lord, forgive me and everything will be forgiven. Everything will be honky-dory again. And that's not the way it works. We need to repent of our sins. We need to turn from our sins. We need to be putting on that new person. We need to be troubled over our sins. What is the Lord doing in this part? We humble ourselves before the Lord. We take the steps of submitting to God, resisting the devil, drawing near to God, cleansing our hearts, pure, or cleansing our hands, purifying our hearts. What, is, what does the Lord do for us here? That's in verse 10. He says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. And he shall lift you up. Go with me to the book of Psalm, chapter 40. And I promise this is the last time we're going to flip through scriptures tonight. God is going to lift us up. Psalm chapter 40 verses 1 through 3 says this, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Friends, God's going to lift us up. He says here, the, the writer David here is talking about waiting on God. Waiting on God to respond. Waiting on God to act. And a lot of times, if, if you're as impatient as I am, we don't wait on the Lord like we should, and that's when we get ourselves into, into a mess. And that's when God comes and rescues us, when we cry out to him. He said, he brought, in verse 2, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. That's the sin of this world. That's the cares of this world. That's the, the lusts of this world, the, the sins in this world. God's going to pull us out of that. He's going to lift us up out of that and get us away from that. I like watching the old westerns on TV, and um, they'll be going through the desert, and you'll see someone fall into quicksand or something, and someone has to get a branch or something weighted, a rope or whatever, and pull the man out of that quicksand before he sinks and perishes. That's the image we get here, that God is pulling us out of the quicksand of life. And he goes on and says, And set my feet upon a rock. And establish my goings. He's going to pull us out and set our feet upon the rock. Our Lord Jesus Christ. So friends, where are you at today? Where are you at in this life? Have you submitted to God? Are, are you a million miles away from God today? Have things been going good and you just got away from God? Maybe something happened in your life. And you turned your back on God. But you feel him tugging again. Friends, you could go a million steps away from God. But it's only one step back. Submit to God. Resist the devil. Draw close to him. Cleanse your hands. Purify your hearts. Humble yourself. And you do those things. And God's going to lift you up. 
He's going to put you on a rock, and he's going to change your going. That's the rest of verse. Let's look at verse 3 of Psalm chapter 40. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. That new song is just like the new life. He given us a new life. Do you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted him? Maybe you have, but you've gotten away from him. We need to take that step back and draw close to God. If you need prayer tonight, if you if you have any prayer requests, put them in the chat room and I'll pray for them here in just a minute. But this is a serious time of this broadcast, folks. This is where we get to the nitty gritty. Are you saved? And are you where you need to be in your walk with the Lord? If you need prayer today, if you need salvation, if you need to give your life to the Lord, let me know. I'll be glad to talk with you about that. If you're not where you need to be, I'll pray for you. But you can follow these steps that James gives us in chapter 4, verses 6 through 10. Follow those steps. Submit to God. Pray and ask God for forgiveness. Father, I just thank you for this message tonight, Lord. I thank you for the, again for this opportunity that we had to study your word and to hear from you. And Father, if there's anybody, Lord, within the sound of my voice tonight that doesn't know you, Father, I pray that you, you prick their hearts, Lord. And draw them to that relationship with you. Help them to realize their need for a Savior. Father, maybe there's somebody listening tonight that has been saved, but they they started getting away from you, Lord. They started falling back into the cares of this world. They fell into a trap of the devil. I pray, Lord, that you help them realize where they are and that you help them draw them back to you. Maybe there's somebody listening tonight, Lord, that's right in the center of your will, not straying from you at all. I pray that you give them the strength to stay in that spot. Father, work in our midst, Lord. Convict us where we need convicting, Lord, and draw us close to you. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight on Talking Scripture. It felt so good to be back here on the broadcast with you all. And I hope that you'll make time to join me again next Tuesday night as we once again break the bread of life. And I encourage you to swing by our website, www.myscripturelinks.org. .org, and you can uh, read some blog posts there. You can listen to uh, past episodes of Talking Scripture. You can listen to... Uh, episodes of the Daily Dose of Inspiration. And I encourage you, if you use one of those podcast things, wherever you get your podcasts from, look for us, the Daily Dose of Inspiration. Or look for scripture links. You'll find us and subscribe to that podcast. It'll mean the world to me, and it'll also make sure that you're getting each day's broadcast. It's totally free. I encourage you to do that. Uh, Remember, get into God's Word and allow God's Word to get into you. And then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day, my friends, and I'll see you back here next Tuesday night at 6 o'clock for Talking Scripture or tomorrow morning for the Daily Dose of Inspiration.